St. Simon's Island, Georgia, a place of mystery and tragedy, some true stories and some folk tales. In the mid-1800s, plantation owners of St. Simon's Island decided they would hire a school marm to teach their children. They found a young woman from Ohio named Margaret. She traveled to Georgia to become the local teacher. Margaret would teach the white plantation children during the day, but at night she would teach the black slave children. There was one little boy named Joshua who Margaret liked to teach the most. Joshua especially loved English literature and poetry. Long after the other slave children had left school, he would stick around and beg Margaret to read to him some more. Still, if bird or devil, clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore, quote the raven, nevermore. However, Joshua never got a chance to use his newfound knowledge. One day, a slave uprising erupted on the plantation. Joshua and his family were casualties of the violence. Margaret took the news of Joshua's death hard. She was so grief-stricken that the only time she ever spoke to anyone was when she was teaching the children. The rest of the time, she walked the back roads of the island alone. At the end of a school day, Margaret was cleaning the classroom when a raven watched her from the window. She picked up a poetry book and began to read to the raven. The raven bobbed its head up and down as if seeming to understand what Margaret was reading. Late one afternoon, some white children saw Margaret reading aloud to the raven. They ran back to their parents screaming, The teacher's a witch! She's a witch! She's brought that little black boy Joshua back from the dead as a bird! The rumors and suspicions of Margaret being a witch led to her execution. After being denied burial at Christ Church Cemetery or any other cemetery on the island, a kind plantation owner buried her body on a small piece of land he owned off the coast. He had a grave marker made for her that was inscribed with three simple words. A beloved teacher. Within a month, the locals who happened to visit the grave noticed that all the vegetation had died within a few feet of where Margaret was buried, and for the next hundred years, nothing grew around the grave. No trees, no grass, no moss.